I am here in this fine morning to welcome each and every one of you to this communication and sharing of insights, inspirations, views, and opinions regarding the impact and import of the social encyclical Fratelli Tutti. So sisters and brothers who are present here in this webinar, a most cordial welcome to one and all. I also deem it a pleasant privilege to extend a special word of welcome to a few personalities who have played a pivotal role in realizing this webinar. We are happy to extend a warm welcome to Professor Kurian Kachapalli, President D.V. Kim, Reverend Dr. Paul Achandi, Rector, Dharmaram College, all the staff and students of DVK, especially of the Faculty of Philosophy. We are indeed honored and fortunate to have the presence and participation of our affiliated institutes, namely Deepal Institute of Philosophy and Religion, Bangalore, Pushpasrama Institute of Philosophy, Mysore, and Demazunod Institute of Philosophy, Parambakam, Chennai to the respected rectors, deans, and students of these centers of learning, may I extend a most cordial welcome. A special word of welcome to our distinguished speakers of the day, the moderators, those who are giving the responses, and all those who are collaborating to coordinate and conduct this webinar, applying their IT skills. Welcoming you one and all, I remain, thank you. It's a great honor to have a person like Dr. Kurian Kachapali, who is currently the president of DVK and moreover, an amazing philosopher, thinker, and a great inspiration for all of us. I cordially welcome Professor Dr. Kurian Kachapali for the inaugural address. Yeah, thank you, Jiril. Sapko Jesu. Very good morning to one and all. Dear and Reverend Father Rector, Dr. Paul Achandi CMI, dear Professor Wilson Adartugaran, Dean, Faculty of Philosophy, Honorable Rectors, Prefects of Studies, Professors, Scholars, and dear participants of the webinar on Fratelli Tutti. At the very outset, may I congratulate the Dean, staff and students of the Faculty of Philosophy, DVK, and its affiliated institutions, DePaul, Pushpashma, and De Masanut for organizing jointly the webinar on the papal encyclical Fratelli Tutti, meaning brothers all. The very logic of Fratelli Tutti to borrow an expression from Martin Luther King Jr. is, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. Fratelli Tutti is a message of Jesus encouraging us to recognize one another as brothers and sisters, and to live accordingly in the common home that God the Father entrusted to us. The 287 paragraph encyclical is a summary statement of Pope Francis' social teaching, in which the Holy Father reminds us, you and me, especially in the backdrop of social distancing caused by the pandemic, COVID-19, that we ought to love our brothers and sisters as much as we would love them when they are with us. The papal encyclical Fratelli Tutti, to my mind, is a clarion call for an exodus. I like to present Fratelli Tutti using an analogy from the Old Testament, the grand narrative of the Exodus event. The Exodus, as we read in the Bible, unfolds 
the story of the Israelites who were delivered by Yahweh from the land of Egypt under the leadership of Moses and Aaron to the promised land of Canaan. In the papal encyclical, the story of the Exodus is not confined to the Israelites, but embraces Fratelli Tutti, brothers and sisters all, namely the entire human family. Following the model of St. Francis of Assisi, Pope Francis shows his openness of heart, which transcends differences of origin, nationality, color, or religion. The encyclical thus aims at promoting a universal aspiration toward fraternity and social friendship. The biblical exodus begins from the land of Egypt, but for Pope, he should begin from a close world, that is in chapter 1, darkened by clouds and enslaved with various plagues like loss of historical consciousness, the throwaway culture, the violation of human rights, conflicts and war, suspicion of immigrants, and the superficiality of digital connection that leads to loneliness, fear, uh, and insecurity. In other words, it's a cry of the humanity to deliver them from the world of evils, which celebrates the elevation of the individual concerns over those of the whole humanity. This exodus envisages a new Canaan, in the words of Pope Francis, an open world, that is in chapter 3, where there is bonding, where there is communion and fraternity, built on true bonds of fidelity. It is an open world where there is recognition of the inherent dignity of all persons, especially those who are vulnerable, poor, or suffering. In economic terms, for Francis states that human dignity should entail the right to sufficient opportunities for his or her integral development. It's an open world where the natural right to private property will be secondary to the universal destination of created goods. In short, is an open world with open hearts where all are brothers and sisters, that is Fratelli Tutti. This exodus from the closed world to the open world is not guided by the chosen heroes like Moses and Aaron, but by the global giants and powers like politics and religion that fulfill the roles of Moses and Aaron respectively. A better politics, chapter five, Pope argues protects the work as an essential dimension of social life. The task of better politics is to find a solution to all that attacks fundamental human rights, such as social exclusion, the marketing of organs, weapons and drugs, sexual exploitation, child labor, terrorism and organized crime, etc. Moreover, the better politics, Pope explains, is a politics centered on human dignity and not subject to finance. In the context of better politics, Pope also advocates the reform of the United Nations in order to give shape to the concept of family of nations working for the common good and the eradication of property. Their true religion, that is chapter eight, Pope thinks must be at the service of fraternity in our world. In Fratelli Tutti, Pope asserts that the essential role the different religions of the world should play is fostering universal fraternity. For religions remind humanity of the existence of a transcendent truth, which is a source of human dignity. Hence the Pope calls for greater collaboration and dialogue among religions for the common good, and especially for the promotion of the poor. 
just as the Israel were fed with manna and water during the Exodus, the brothers and sisters in their journey from the closed world to the open world are nurtured by the heavenly manna and water, namely love and faith. True love, chapter 2, says Pope, impels us toward universal communion. For love on the one hand draws us out of ourselves and on the other draws the ones we love into ourselves. Love thus calls for growth in openness and the ability to accept others as part of a continuing adventure with a great sense of mutual belonging. In this context, the parable of the Good Samaritan is presented as a model par excellence. The Holy Father sees in the parable a reminder that the natural love we experience for our family members should be consciously extended to those who are strangers to us. This invitation to care for strangers in need, as Pope demands, must be expressed both personally case by case and communally united as a family. Each new day rise Pope should be seen as an opportunity to include, integrate, and lift up the fallen. Finally, faith, that's chapter 8, faith in God the Father, the creator of all human beings for Pope Francis is the ultimate foundation upon which Fratelli Tutti is built. As believers, Pope writes, we are convinced that without openness to the Father of all, there will be no solid and stable reasons for an appeal to fraternity. As believers, we are challenged to return to our sources, to what is essential, that is, worship of God and love for our neighbor, one and one only command of Jesus. Dear professors, scholars, and participants, let us vouch to make the dream of Pope Francis a reality. Dream of a single human family as fellow travelers, homo viato, sharing the same earth, which is our common home, oikos. Each of us bringing the richness of his or her belief, each of us with his or her own voice, as brothers and sisters all, that is Fratelli Tutti. Thank you. May God bless us all. We are really motivated to forge ahead with our webinar. Thank you, Father. Now it's time to enter into the crux of this webinar, the enlightening and illuminative sessions. We'll have four sessions in total with question and answer sessions after each one. The participants can post their questions in the chat box while presenting too. Here we begin with the first session of the day. I'm extremely glad to introduce Dr. Gregory Malayal to moderate this session. He's currently a faculty of philosophy, DBK, and holds a doctorate in physics. Please, Father. Thank you, Brother Jeril. Dear Reverend fathers, sisters, and brothers, may I now invite Brother Alphonse at Nanikil VC from DePaul Institute of Religion and Philosophy for presenting his paper titled Procuring Peace by Word, Not by Sword. Welcome, Brother. Thank you, Father. Good morning, one and all present in this virtual platform. I ask those tempted to yield to violence in any form to enter into biblical stories that find their fullest expression in Jesus' order to a disciple to put your sword back into its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Dear friends, in this paper, I view Fratelli Tutti as a means 
to procure peace by word and not by sword faced with injustice and cruelty the possible human reaction can be violence against the perpetrator wise men like mahatma gandhi martin luther king and nelson mandela all of whom find mention in the encyclical have shown us that there is another way open for us to counter violence and bring about peace it is the way of the word or dialogue in proposing this new way these leaders have been profoundly influenced by jesus message of forgiveness and love pope francis invites us to ponder deeply on this central christian message at a time when humanity seems to be bursting at the seams with suspicion among religions and temptations for violence today we live in a world in which peace is threatened in myriad ways religion based exclusive nationalism xenophobia and terrorism inspired by narrow interpretations of religions intolerance of otherness these are just some of the threats to world peace mentioned by pope francis to understand the encyclical's remedy to the maladies of today i propose to use bergson's notion of dynamic religion as a hermeneutical key in the first in the first part of my presentation i will briefly deal with bergsonian notion of dynamic religion and then in the second part show how the central message of fratelli tutti for today's humanity can be opened with this hermeneutical key dynamic religion henry bergson was not only a profound thinker but also someone who was deeply involved in the affairs of the world especially for the creation of international peace besides being a renowned philosopher he was a french diplomat to the united states during the second decade of the 20th century he was instrumental in the formation of the league of nations bergson was appointed president of the international commission for intellectual cooperation the precursor to unesco bergson in his final book the two sources of morality and religion shows that there are two types of morality and religion there is closed morality whose religion is static and there is the open morality whose religion is dynamic closed morality and static religion are concerned with social cohesion nature has made certain species evolve in such a way that the individuals in these species cannot exist on their own an example that bergson gives is of bees only by sticking together among themselves and by excluding others they can survive and prosper what bergson calls closed morality has its origin in this social need for cohesion group cohesion is brought about by strict adherence by the members to its moral code which is narrowly exclusivist for bergson closed morality always leads to war since it depicts other societies as potential enemies static religion is the religion of the closed morality the existence of static religion in our present society is evident in the recent terrorist attacks that sporadically flare up the attack in france on 29th october bear witness to the existence of this there is also another kind of morality and religion according to bergson that is the open morality and dynamic religion the open morality is genuinely universal and it aims at peace it aims at an open society the source of the open morality is what bergson calls creative emotions bergson gives the example of musician who first feels joy and then creates a joyful music which is then represented in musical notations creative emotion 
makes one unstable and throws one out of the habitual mode of intelligence which is directed at needs mystical experiences are another kind of creative emotion and dynamic religion is mystical dynamic religion acts on the impetus of love the impetus of love like joy and sympathy is a creative emotion bergson says that these supra intellectual or mystical actions are not initiated by everyone but only by the enlightened here bergson gives the names of jesus christ and socrates fratelli tutti a call to dynamic religion the encyclical fratelli tutti can be viewed as a call to embrace dynamic religion in so far as it calls for a gro- for a global community that transcends the borders of narrow regionalism and encompasses people from every race every nationality every religion every sex and every tribe pope francis in the concluding prayer to the creator writes may our hearts be open to all the peoples and nations of the earth may we recognize the goodness and beauty that you have sown in each of us and thus forge bonds of unity common projects and shared dreams amen in similar vein henry bergson to writes from holding our country dear we learn to love mankind our sympathies are supposed to broaden out in an unbroken progression and to end by embracing all humanity it is also rather striking that bergoglio and bergson one a pontiff and the other a jew stress the importance of the gospel in the shaping of human morality the philosopher says thus the morality of the gospels is essentially that of the open soul there is an antithesis that occurs in the sermon on the mount with the interposition of the words you have heard that it was said and but i say unto you according to bergson this symbolizes on the one hand the closed morality and on the other the open morality the pontiff more personally says if the music of the gospel ceases to resonate in our very being we will lose the joy born of compassion the tender love born of trust and the capacity for reconciliation the present dangers pope francis says that the present age is seen to be drifting and sliding downwards to the long buried and forgotten parochial conflicts ancient conflicts though long buried are breaking out anew pope francis description of the present day humanity reminds us of bergson's description of a closed morality and static religion he says yet there are those who seek solutions in war frequently fueled by a breakdown in relations hegemonic ambitions abuses of power fear of others and a tendency to see diversity as an obstacle some of the ways that the pope suggests to achieve this open society are as follows creation of an all inclusive atmosphere sound political life forgiveness tolerance and above everything a transcendent truth to cling on to creation of an all inclusive state the most important way to transcend the growing insular outlook is by embracing an all inclusive receptivity pope francis calls this as social friendship there is the danger in every individual to have a lurking prejudice towards members of other ethnic backgrounds pope francis calls it as local narcissism Bergson says that anyone who is thoroughly familiar with the language and literature of a people cannot be wholly its enemy. 
the solution that is given by both the pontiff and the philosopher is one of dialogue the pope further says that a lasting peace will only be possible on the basis of a global ethic of solidarity and cooperation sound political life pope francis emphasizes the need for effective politics for a growth towards universal fraternity and social peace he says that we need a politics that is far sighted and capable of a new integral and interdisciplinary approach the pope calls our attention to the dialogue that he had with grand imam ahmed al taib they had jointly appealed to the international policy and world economy to obliterate divisive politics and to promote a culture of tolerance as a remedy to all this hate mongering the pope says that good politics combines love with hope and with confidence in the reserves of goodness present in human hearts forgiveness pope francis says that the path to peace does not consist in going back to a point of time in the past before the conflict had arisen those who were fierce enemies should enter into a dialogue with commitment to the truth therefore the pope says violence leads to more violence hatred to more hatred death to more death we must break the cycle which seems inescapable pope francis pragmatically says that the problems that a society is experiencing need to be clearly identified we also need to acknowledge the possibility that others have at least a legitimate point of view belief in a transcendent truth as a sure foundation for all stable peace the pope finally says that we need to have an openness to the father of all he says that everything that is not founded on this will eventually collapse the realization that we should seek peace comes from the awareness that all of us are the children of god as a conclusion to his assertion in the belief of god towards harmonious existence the pope says that it is possible to find a means of serene ordered and peaceful coexistence accepting our differences and rejoicing that as children of the one god we are all brothers and sisters conclusion fratelli tutti is an open letter to all people of goodwill who are willing to live a life of harmony free from all sectarian and partisan politics in this regard pope francis appeals to the conscience of the people Pope Francis is here the mystic who motivates people according to the concept of dynamic religion the personal appeal or attraction of exceptional individuals who reveal to the rest of humanity new higher moral goals brings about a higher morality which is described by Bergson as open dynamic absolute and human This is precisely what Pope Francis advocates through Fratelli Tutti. The call of Pope Francis is towards being more human, one that returns to the foundational vocation wherein God calls all people to be peacemakers and reconcilers. Thank you dear friends for your patient listening. As I close my paper I gratefully remember all those who have helped me in this endeavor. First of all, my thanks goes to Father Roy Varagat for giving me this opportunity. I thank all the fathers, especially Father Rector, Father John Valleil, Father Rafi Veraparmbil, Father Thomas Cherwil, and all the other fathers for their valuable suggestions, corrections, and their support. I am also indebted to Brother Anthony and Brother Sibin. who helped me prepare this paper brother leo peter and brother jobit who helped me with the presentation finally i thank all my batchmates and my community for their support and encouragement
Thank you. Thank you, Brother Alphonse, for your systematic exposition of the theme. You asserted well that Fratelli Tutti is a call to dynamic religion. Now, Rohin Vijay Kumar, second year MA Philosophy, Dharmara Midya Kshetram, to give his response. Welcome, Rohin Vijay Kumar. A very warm welcome to one and all present here, respected professors, academicians, scholars, students, and my dear friends. Before going ahead with my response, I would like to congratulate Brother Alphonse on writing the cogent and coherent paper titled Procuring Peace by Word and Not by Sword. Thank you. The paper quintessentially focuses on attainment of peace through a dynamic view of religion. In today's world, where the ancient conflicts between morality and religion, modernity and religion have awoken with a renewed energy in various parts of the world, it becomes pertinent that we come up with solutions and new interpretations of religion and reality to maintain peace among the masses, among humanity. Following this line of thought, the paper presents a warning, a calling, and a new understanding of the aforementioned conflict. The paper manages to engage with this conflict by drawing a parallel understanding between Pope Francis's recent encyclical Fratelli Tutti and the dynamic view of religion found in the works of famous French philosopher Henri Bergson. In a nutshell, the paper elaborates on Bergson's understanding of two forms of religion and morality, namely close morality where religion is static and open morality where religion is dynamic. The paper elaborates the group cohesion and exclusivist nature of close morality with its static religion. In comparison, Open morality and dynamic religion focuses on an open and creative progress aiming towards an open society that is infused with creative emotion. Similarly, Pope Francis's Fratelli Tutti encourages people to look at religion in a dynamic way and addresses a wider global community which has not been reduced and limited by the terms that divide people. The paper also focuses on the present dangers that have unfurred in recent years and advocates for an all-inclusive community that is based on sound political life, emotes forgiveness and love, and believes in a transcendental truth. In the end, I would only like to once again congratulate Brother Alphonse on the paper. The paper, in its essence, tries to understand the nuances of the conflict between modernity and religion. Concomitantly, it also looks at the relation between philosophy and religion in a complementary and supportive way. I would like to ask Brother Alphonse a question that in today's world of technological and global advancement, wouldn't it, would it be futile to think that accessibility to information and awareness are the primary hurdles? In that case, what are the ways knowledge, especially pertaining to the questions we're dealing with today, can not, not only be learned, but also realized among the general masses. I wish Brother Alphonse good luck and thank you. Bro, uh, hello, Brother Rohan. Uh, excuse me, Brother Rohan. Yes. Uh, could you please repeat your question in the last two sentences? Yeah, my question was, in today's technological and global world, it would be futile to think that accessibility to information and awareness are the primary hurdles. In that case, what are the ways knowledge, especially pertaining to the questions we're dealing with today, can not only be learned, but realized among the general masses? Thank you, okay, thank you Robin, thank you. for your precise and well-analyzed response. Thank you. Uh, there are no questions in the chat box. So, no, I, uh, Brother Alphonse can mm. give his clarification on uh, the question uh, raised by Rohin. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that we do not see, uh, we do not consider that the present ex explosion of knowledge is a hurdle. We uh, we see that the present explosion of knowledge, especially uh, with regard to the invention of the World Wide Web and the huge connectivity that is there in the present society is 
or is forging more strong relations and uh, uh, considering pope francis encyclical we can say that pope francis is telling us not to limit ourselves to certain parochial ideas and uh, ideas that we have he is telling us to be open to society uh, uh, what uh, i understand is that he does uh, the pope asks us uh, to go outside our uh, our prejudices and thus embrace everyone now uh, this is precisely what bergson also means when he says uh, that we should be open that we should embrace an open religion that we should embrace a dynamic religion and it leads to a dynamic society or an open society so this is what i would like to say regarding brother rohin's uh, comments and his question thank you alphonse um, there are uh, no questions in chat box so this is uh, a chance to raise open questions so participants are welcome to raise their questions now one or two questions may be permitted Uh, if there are uh, no questions uh, we shall conclude the session thank you brother alphonse for your excellent presentation and rohin for your well analyzed response so we shall uh, anybody raising questions no so we shall move to the next uh, session uh, brother jeril please <coughs> Thank you, Father Gregory. Moving on, I am really privileged to invite Reverend Dr. Roy Matthew Varagat, B.C., Dean, Deepal Institute of Philosophy and Religion, Bengaluru, to moderate the second session. Father, kindly take over. Dear brother, thank you for inviting me. And in this second session, we have uh, uh, Brother Pawan Kumar, O.C.D. to. speak on nobler politics based on fratelli tutti and brother mrudul kodiyan to give a response so first of all i invite brother pawan kumar to present his thesis on this welcome brother yes thank you father a very good morning to everyone bon giorno fratelli e sorelle fratelli tutti nobler politics a demand to play social law at the forefront introduction on the feast of st francis of assisi the holy father pope francis released the third encyclical letter of his papacy entitled fratelli tutti on fraternity and social friendship in this time of social distancing the holy father reminds us that we ought to love our brothers and sisters as much when they are far away the encyclical articulates a call for all human persons to recognize and live out our common fraternity it is the consideration of what is holding humanity back from the development of universal fraternity our identity as humans is determined by our our various functions that we perform in this world the government with their rigid stipulated functionalities rule their respective states this either directly or indirectly will govern the individuals thus we are confided to their local interests and bound to their rules and regulations this encyclical of pope francis invites us to live in a better world with a new way of organizing people with a noble kind of politics 
So what exactly is a noble kind of politics all about? This is elaborated in our seminar paper. Energy, nobler politics would mean as the which demands to place social law at the forefront, thereby making it, 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 it as a fundamental precept for every citizen. In simpler words, we will see how Pope Francis is emphasizing on a politics that is filled with love and charity, that which sheds forth light of hope and peace. For many people today, politics is a distasteful role, often due to mistakes, corruption, and inefficiency of some of the politicians. Pope Francis emphasizes that politics must not be subject to the economy, nor should the economy be subject to the dictates of an efficiency driven paradigm of technocracy. Political love is practiced in sacrifice for those in greatest need, but in accord with subsidiarity, so that it does not become a soulless pragmatism. It is, sure, it is truly noble to place our hope in the hidden power of the seeds of goodness we sow, and thus to initiate processes whose fruits will be reaped by others. Thus, politics should focus on the long-term common good, recognizing that all people are our brothers and sisters, and seeking forms of social friendship that include everyone is not merely utopian. Individuals can help others in need when they are joined together initiating social processes of fraternity and justice for all. They enter the field of charity at its vastest, namely political charity. This political charity is born of a social awareness that transcends every individualistic mindset. Social es charity. Excuse me, excuse me, brother Pavan. Excuse me, yes. brother Pavan. Can you please put that slide in the full screen? Please share in the full screen. Yeah, right bottom. Go to the PPT right bottom. You have the full screen mode. Yeah. Uh, full, full screen, full screen. Uh, in the right bottom of that PPT, yes, sir. yeah, you can uh, you can click on that uh, to the right end. You have that full screen mode there near that minus button. Have you seen? Ah, uh, it's 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 fine. It's fine, brother. You you carry on. You carry on. They, they might do it between. Yeah, you carry on. Yeah. Social law. Social law is a force capable of inspiring new ways of approaching the problems of today's world, of mm -hmm. profoundly renewing structures, social organizations, and legal systems from within. Charity, with its impulse to universality, is capable of building a new world. Charity needs the light of the truth that we constantly see. That life is both the life of reason and the life of faith, and does not admit any form of relativism. This charity, which is the spiritual heart of politics, is always a preferential love shown to those in the greatest need. That gaze is at the heart of the authentic spirit of politics. It sees paths open up that are different from those of soulless pragmatism. It makes us realize that the scandal of poverty cannot be addressed by promoting strategies of containment that only tranquilize the poor and render them tame and inoffensive. Exercise of political love. Politicians are called to tend the needs of individuals and peoples. To tend those in need takes strength and tenderness, efforts and generosity in the midst of a functionalistic and privatized mindset that inexorably leads to the throwaway culture. It involves taking responsibility for the person with its situations of utter marginalization and anguish and being capable of bestowing dignity upon it. Politicians are doers, builders with ambitious goals, possessed, possessed of a broad, realistic, and pragmatic gaze that looks beyond their own borders. Their biggest concern should not be about a drop in the pole, but about finding effective solutions to the phenomenon of social and economic exclusion with its painful consequences, human trafficking, the marketing of human organs and tissues, the sexual exploitation of boys and girls, slave labor, including prostitution, the drug and weapons free, terrorism and international organized crime. World politics need to make an effective elimination of hunger. 
Indeed, when financial speculation manipulates the price of food, treating it as just another commodity, millions of people suffer and die from hunger. At the same time, tons of food are thrown away. This constitutes a genuine scandal. Hunger is criminal. Food is an inalienable right. Political charity. Government leaders should be the first to make the sacrifices that foster to encounter and to see convergence on the least some issue. They should be ready to listen to different points of views and to make room for everyone. Through sacrifice and patience, they can help to create a beautiful polyhedral reality in which everyone has a place. Politicians are called to practice love in their daily interpersonal relationship. As persons, they need to consider that the modern world, with its technical advances, needs to increasingly to functionalize the satisfaction of human desires, now classified and subdivided among different services. Every person in the world must relate with the other to experience the real nature of life with love. That shows the true authenticity of one's own existence. Our life gets true meaning when we create a bond with others. Moving beyond ourselves. Love creates a path to come to the other. It creates a bond. Man has to move beyond himself. Our life does not mean having relationships within a small group, even with those who have shared it. There is mutual love and true friendship in a group. We know from the rule of St. Benedict the aspect of sacred duty of hospitality. He insists uh, to welcome the pilgrims in small communities in a desert area with utmost care and attention. It was the instrument to cultivate such kind of good habits. The unique value of love. The action of the moral attitude must be rightly directed to foster the union with the others. St. Bonaventure said that love enables us to acquire all the virtues. Our spiritual life is also measured by love. It takes first place and it must never be put at risk. Love is an action which is benevolent and considered to be worthy, pleasing and beautiful. It seeks good for others as well as builds the relationship. Love calls for growth to be open for others. It has the ability to accept others. Love also connects, communicates, unites each other and shows our destiny. Open societies that integrate everyone. There is an aspect of universal openness in love that is essential, existential rather than geographical. It has to do with our daily efforts to expand our circle of friends. Every brother or sister in need, when abandoned or ignored by the society in which I live, becomes an existential foreigner, even though born in the same country. They may be citizens with full rights, yet they are treated like foreigners in their own country. Racism is one such kind of attitude. Our care must ensure the active participation with the exiles, which gives us courage on behalf of those who are discriminated against their disabilities. Thus, on this account, Pope Francis asserts that we need to have the courage to give a voice to those who are discriminated due to their disability, because sadly, in some countries, even today, people find it hard to acknowledge them as persons of equal dignity. Rights without borders. No one can remain excluded because of his or her place of birth. There should not be any discrimination between men and women, poor and rich. If a person wants to develop and live a dignified life, one must possess equal rights and opportunities. An authentic human fraternity must be based on the recognition of the inherent dignity of all persons, especially those who are vulnerable, poor, or suffering. Pope Francis here echoes the church teaching of the common destination of created goods. If one person lacks what is necessary to live with dignity, it is because another person is detaining it. Rights of people. The private property and the rights of citizens must be the common destination of goods. Within the country, there are different regions which has a responsibility to improve the living condition of the native people. Finally, that leads to have a true path of peace without any threats. There should also be solidarity and cooperation in the service of the other. Our country needs a dignified life and development, so it has to avoid unnecessary migration. There are some programs held for the migrants. They are granting visas, 
providing suitable and dignified housing, personal security, basic services, ensuring justice systems, opening bank accounts, freedom of employment, education, shelter and union of families. There is also a concept of citizenship which comes under rights and duties. It applies for the recent arrivals and who are active in the society. <clears throat> Reciprocal gifts. Migrants have an opportunity for the integral human development. They should not become a threat to others in considering the dignity of every human being. The diff different cultures that have flourished in the countries need to be preserved for the growth. Meanwhile, it should aid to have the new experience. It is the responsibility of everyone to discover the gifts of each person, to promote the union of family and community with the experience. When Pope met the Grand Imam Ahmad al Tayyib, he said that the relations between East and West are necessary to enrich the culture through the exchange and dialogue. The West can find the remedies for the spiritual and religious maladies caused by materialism, and East can find in the West the elements of weakness, division, conflict, culture decline to be free. It is also important to build the bond of human rights to help to build a dignified life, local and universal. We must give attention to globalization to avoid banality. The universal fraternity and social friendship are inseparable poles in the society. If we separate these two qualities, there may arise a dangerous polarization or a split may take place. On the other hand, local possesses some qualities like bringing enrichment, etc. To begin any initiatives, locals are the ones who encourage and support us faithfully. Local communities possess a greater degree of integration. The development of any society or a nation as a whole can be measured by the way of locals are integrated and advanced. The locals provide a strong foundation for any value system. Local flavor. There should be a strong foundation of openness of oneself in regard to culture and love. We can always welcome love and care our own native land, the culture. We get experience being raised in a particular place and culture. Universal may have sometimes only one culture which may not help in many ways for the growth, but we must look at the reality only which benefits us more. The universal horizon. Anyhow, we must open ourselves to the universal, because in the local there will be insecurity, fear and rejection in some aspects. If we do not open, then there will be a limited number of ideals, custom, forms of security, capacity to admire the beauty, spirit of solidarity, healthy openness upholds our identity. It is better to cherish the rules of the ancestral cultures for the good enrichment and to preserve the benefits. The healthy relationship between <clears throat> one's native land with the other helps, us, helps to keep the spirit of society. When we become the part of the universal, we discover its own beauty. Education promotes the value of love for one's neighbor. When this aspect is practiced, there will be gratitude, solidarity, and reciprocity. Conclusion. The encyclical aims to promote a universal aspiration toward fraternity and social friendship, beginning with our common membership in the human family, from the acknowledgement that we are brothers and sisters because we are the children of one creator, all in the same boat, and hence we need to be aware that in a globalized and interconnected world, only together can we be saved. Fraternity is to be encouraged not only in words, but in deeds. Deeds made tangible in a better kind of politics, which is not subordinated to financial interests, but to serving the common good. The task of politics, moreover, is to find a solution to all that attacks fundamental human rights, such as social exclusion, the marketing of organs, tissues, weapons and drugs, sexual exploitation, slave labor, terrorism, and organized crime. Thus, this encyclical concludes by reminding Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi, and above all, Blessed Charles de Foucault, a model for everyone, 
of what it means to identify with the least in order to become the universal brother so that the heart of mankind may harbor a spirit of fraternity. Thank you, one and all. So congratulations, Brother Pawan, for your beautiful and systematic presentation on the possibility of holding and propagating a noble politics for the world. Now it is a time for Brother Mrudal Kodian to give a response to this paper. Brother Mrudal, please come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Father Roy. Yep. So first of all, let me congratulate Brother Pawan for that creative paper presentation. Thank you, Brother, for that presentation. Thank you, Brother. Dear Reverend Father Kurian Kachipuli, President DVK, Father Wilson Adatugaran, the Dean Faculty of Philosophy, and my dear fathers, brothers, sisters, a warm good morning to all of you. Let me enter into my duty. Politics is an area of engagement. And in this course of engagement, it is natural that a person's ideas, ideologies, and interests also may be carried along, especially in policy making. This can have both positive and negative impacts. But while considering the common good, this dilemma of politics should not hinder anybody from political engagement. Here, what is to be distinguished is politics of engagement from power politics. Power politics is where the emphasis is given to power a person holds. It is a mode of dictatorship. And the result of this is marginalization of the poor and the weak through the instrumentality of indifference. The present day politics is in a way characterized by this method of indifference. It is here we should propagate the idea of a better politics which places social love at this at its forefront. And Brother Pawan had been talking to us on Fratelli Tutti's exhortation for a new nobler politics. It is one of the major thoughts which Pope Francis wants to share with us. A noble kind of politics is the key theme of the paper, which is achieved through social love. Politics has to change its focus from economics to social love to make the shift to a nobler politics. Some of the major points underlined during the paper presentation were social love, which enables a person to exercise true charity with its universality as it is in society, a person situates himself or herself. Exercise of political love. It is only possible through the attending to the needs of the weaker sections of society, we can exercise political love, political charity exercised by governments. It brings openness to others' viewpoints which would stand as a model for communities to foster an inclusive social atmosphere. Moving beyond ourselves is a constant reminder of Pope Francis to come out of our comfort zones. Open societies that integrate everyone is another highlighting point which aims to include all kinds of people into our society especially migrants and the people of other races. Rights without borders, presses us to pro provide basic needs to others, which rightly belongs to them. And finally, the local and universal outlook is to be preserved for a locally relevant and ideally acceptable politics. These are the necessary frameworks by which we can develop a better polity. Jesus Christ himself, who emptied and thereby gained the whole world. Thank you, I remind. So oh, thank you, dear brother Mrudil, for your response, which was beautiful and precise. So now it is open for everyone. And 
uh, one question is already there in the chat box that is from uh, uh, holy trinitarians so all can keep yourself unmuted and if you don't mind this uh, brother or father from holy trinity can you repeat that question using your audio are you there പോളിറ്റിക്കൽ പാർട്ടീസ് are influenced by various religions and some personal interests of politicians so is question clear to you pawan it's a question directly to you yes yeah as you have asked me that uh, how this uh, fertility is affected in indian politics i would say that now if we say the politics we know the condition of uh, the politicians how they are leading the people uh, i would say that instead of uh, seeing this discrim- discriminations and all they place the social law means uh, uh, equality for everyone the fraternity in the politics will be relevant in everybody's life okay so hope it satisfies the questionnaire still we have uh, yeah time is there if anyone and so raise a questions you are welcome and i think there is no other question left in the chat box there is one more father roy is in the top is that one is meant to this one below that john brito you could ask them also yeah please. then john brito if is are available with audio please can you repeat the question from uh, the john brito yeah thanks so am i no oh my oh my yeah right are you there yeah okay father or father or brother please repeat that question so that all can hear good morning father this is parandu anbursi i am the one who asked this question yeah it was a nice presentation from brother and uh, in your presentation you said hunger is a crime yes it is true that one of the tamil uh, philosophers uh, ramalinga adigila he says in his uh, great book in his uh, classical work jiva karunyam about hunger hunger destroys life discipline peace and unity and uh, hunger affects everyone uniformly and hunger causes sorrow bitterness and anger and in this uh, political present political scenario you are st- you are also talking about uh, this uh, political charity and uh, this uh, polit- is the political charity is there Uh, any measure to eradicate this uh, social evil in this present context so i like to know your comments on this how can we eradicate this social evil hunger in this present scenario yeah okay the question is clear so brother pawan can you respond to that yes brother as i have said uh, we have mentioned in our seminar paper about the hunger and uh, in the world we see how much of the people are uh, striving for food so the better way to overcome this problem is bringing up the different policies uh, for the people means which will be helpful for them in all the ways i hope it is satisfactory to brother john de brito so i think those are the questions and we have still more time so if you, someone also can add something to this paper especially this is of a uh, subject of uh, interest maybe a general question that uh, pavan can respond from me maybe like is pope a socialist is he taking the track of a socialism or can you respond to that question because he is accusing lot of liberalist policies or uh, globalist policies globalist uh, globalizations he finds fault with 
then uh, he is promoting some communitarian trends can you please repeat the question once more not clear for me because he is criticizing this liberalism and globalization to an extreme extent and as a solution he is proposing some socialistic or communitarian policies can you comment on that uh, i would prefer communitarian okay okay yeah okay i think it seems uh, uh, it is our time so dear fathers brothers and sisters i thank uh, for giving uh, giving this opportunity to moderate this session once more i congratulate uh, this brother pavan and uh, mrudul for uh, systematic and wonderful presentation thank you thank you very much thank you father thanks a lot father roy it's time to disperse for a short break now We'll resume the vibes of the webinar sessions at sharp 10:50 a.m. IST. Kindly don't exit yourselves out of the link. Stay online and stay tuned. See you at 10:50 a.m.
Welcome back. Heaving ahead, let me call upon Reverend Dr. Oswal Krasta Osidi, Dean of Pushpasrama Institute of Philosophy, Mysore, to moderate the third session of the day. Father, please. Thank you, Jiril, for introducing me and extending me a welcome to this session. Welcome to everyone for this third session of today's seminar on Fratelli Tutti. We have beautifully reflected so far on how to procure peace and how to have a nobler politics. Now we enter into the third paper that's on the dialogue. Dialogue celebrating the beauty of diversity. I invite brother Chris Joseph to present his paper and I wish him all the best. Yes, thank you, Father. Good morning, one and all present here. I am Brother Chris from Dharmaram Vidya Kshetram, and I will be presenting my paper on the topic dialogue, celebrating the beauty of diversity with regard to the latest encyclical of Pope Francis titled Fratelli Tutti. I feel privileged and honored to have been given this amazing opportunity. And I will request you all to look at this topic through the eyes of the world as in 2020. Life is an art of encounter. In the words of Pope Francis in Pratelli Tutti articles 87 and 89, we understand that life exists where there is bonding, communion and fraternity. Life is stronger than death when it is built on true relationships and bonds of fidelity. Every healthy, authentic relationship opens us to others and we cannot reduce to relationships within a small group. Pope Francis has repeatedly invited us to build a culture of encounter capable of transcending our differences and divisions. This encyclical Fratelli Tutti aims at motivating us to move forward foreseeing the ideals of harmony and fraternity. Pope Francis has employed a method of dialogue and he has been greatly applauded for this method. We know that he has traveled to many places to have dialogue, especially with the world leaders and that he has been successful in placing his stance and opinions in the way that it ought to be done. Beauty of diversity. There is beauty and goodness all around us. Everything that we experience and perceive are all part of this great magnificent diversity. We do understand that rarest is the precious. Uniqueness is the market. In fact, it is very hard to find two things that are exactly carbon copies. People are different. They look different, they talk different. The Asian appears different from the American. There's a difference between the black and the white. But sadly, along the course of history, racism, casteism, inequalities, exile, dominations, and other forms of evils have prevailed and is still on the rise. It is only with the coming of the recent COVID pandemic that man has begun to realize that humanity travels on the same boat and that it is only together that the pandemic could be defeated. This beauty in diversity is something that has to be celebrated. This is not to be suppressed. And it is in this line that Pope Francis has penned down this encyclical. Pope Francis reminds us that we have a scope to find solutions and we have a scope to work for results, results that would contribute towards harmony and fraternity. Now, my next dialogue, my next attention would be dialogue, a human mode of action. Articles, Article 198 in Fratelli Tutti says as follows, approaching, speaking, listening, looking at, coming to know and understanding one another and finding common ground. All these things are summed up in one word dialogue. This is the definition that he gives to dialogue. 
Dialogue is essentially an encounter, a conversation, a speaking with and a listening to among partners. Each partner speaks from his or her own context, from his or her own perspective. Actually, to enter, actually, we are invited to enter as much as possible into the experience of the other and to see others' perspective through our eyes. The aim of dialogue is not to convince the partner of one's own deeply held convictions, but to understand another in a deep sense. Above all, it's a spiritual experience in understanding the other, a listening and speaking to one another in love. Dialogue is a necessary companion to doctrine, for it presents doctrine with a human face. Dialogue is respectful, it strives for consensus, and it seeks the truth. Dialogue opens the way to a culture of encounter. Pope Francis in Fratelli Tutti suggests dialogue as a necessary mandate for better solutions and relationships. Dialogue in the context of Fratelli Tutti. There has always been dark clouds in the pages of human history. Fratelli Tutti offers the method of dialogue as a solution for conflicts and as a means to ensure fraternity. There are some who do not respect diversities. Some are absolutely intolerant. And yet there are some who only stand on the extremes. They are blinded by their own convictions and beliefs. For example, let's consider the hideous face of terrorism in the name of religion and nationality. There are forced conversions everywhere, which has been motivated by force, by threats, or by insinuations. Sometimes I get reminded of the gruesome murder of Graham Stain and his little children in the car by being, by being burned alive. The Taj Hotel attacks, the murder of George Floyd, the September 9 attacks, etc., are all some handful instances which can never be erased from our consciences. Fratelli Tutti, Article number 106 and 110 and 121 states that social friendship and universal fraternity necessarily calls for an acknowledgement of the worth of every human person, always and everywhere. Every human being is valuable and has the right to live with dignity to achieve integral development. That basic right cannot be, defend, cannot be denied by any country. No one can remain excluded. This is where tolerance, respect for human dignity and harmony stand important in the words of Fratelli Tutti. And it is only by these can proper dialogue be possible. Next, I would like to point out the visit of Pope Francis to the United Arab Emirates. There was a historic event as it was the first ever visit by a pontiff to the Arabian Peninsula. Articles 119 and 203 reminds us that a country flourishes when constructive dialogue occurs among its many rich cultural components, namely popular culture, university culture, youth culture, artistic culture, technological culture, economic culture, family culture, and media culture. Authentic social dialogue involves the ability to respect the other's point of view and to admit that it may include legitimate convictions and concerns. Pope Francis, on his three-day visit to the United Arab Emirates, went to promote a dialogue based on tolerance and peace with the Muslim world. Here was what he wrote on Twitter. I am about to leave for the United Arab Emirates. I am visiting that country as a brother in order to write a page of dialogue together and to travel paths of peace together. Pray for me. His method of dialogue was happily received with open hands and there he preached the message of coexistence. 
In his six years as a pontiff, Francis has conducted 25 trips abroad, out of which 13 were to Muslim countries, from Turkey to Palestine, Egypt to Jordan, Bangladesh to the Central African Republic. The Pope has prayed in local mosque with their imams, invoking tolerance and peace between worshipers of the two faiths. Thus, he improved upon harmony through dialogue and respect. Expressing his concerns for refugees, the Pope states in Fratelli Tutti articles 37 and 39, the absence of human dignity is clearly evident at national borders where countless thousands of refugees are trying to escape war, persecutions and, nat and natural catastrophes. While they seek opportunities for themselves and their families, some political regimes do everything in their power to prevent the arrival of migrants, considering them unworthy of fraternal love. In this regard, I would point out the problem of migration by refugees from their own land. There are many instances, especially the very recent ones. For those people who are forced to flee from desperate circumstances, losing everything is only the beginning. Most spend years in floods, dependent on the generosity of countries that did not always want them to stay. Their days are spent awaiting asylum, legal resettlement in a country which is not their own, or just simply wait until it be safe for them to return to their own country. In the meantime, they often struggle in poor living conditions, have few legal rights, vulnerable to exploitation, and are immersed in uncertainty without knowing how things would turn out in the end. Fratelli Tutti explains in article number 233, building social friendship calls for a renewed encounter with the most impoverished and vulnerable sectors of the society. For, pre for peace is not merely absence of war, but it's a tireless commitment, especially on the part of those of us charged recognize, protect, and concretely restore the dignity so often overlooked or ignored of our brothers and sisters. My point here is that dialogue entails respect for human dignity shown by respect for the face of the individual, for the voice of the individual. It works only when there is openness, tolerance, accepting the other as someone equal to me disregarding the differences of age, nationality, color, race, and sex. There are countries where minority freedom and voice is killed or disregarded. As a result, dialogue is not possible and it turns out to be a dictatorship, wherein one speaks with authority and the others are bound to consent. Remember, the other person's voice has a right just as I do. I'm coming on to the conclusion of my paper. Firstly, proper dialogue always targets towards happiness, which is eudaimonia and peace. And it always happens when I consider the other as my equal. It is here that the face of the other person as stated by Levinas stands important. I do think that this encyclical does orient itself to these idols. Beauty is not just external, it is not just sensual. There is beauty all around us. There is beauty in harmony, peace and fraternity. All that contributes otherwise is just ugly, disoriented. We have seen the ugliness in terrorism, massacres, bloodsheds, homicides and conflicts. We have seen the ugliness and wretchedness of the world wars one and two. We have seen the disorientations of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In this paper, I would conclude with the following notion. Conflicts should move towards dialogue. Dialogue always dwells in respect. Dialogue promotes fraternity. Fraternity promotes peace and harmony. Peace and harmony and fraternity is beauty and beauty is to be celebrated. 
Therefore, dialogue is the path to establish, maintain, and live fraternity and social friendship envisaged in the Fratelli Tutti, celebrating the beauty of the diversity of life and leading all to peace and harmony. Thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you very much, Brother Chris, for your wonderful and clear presentation. You have emphasized that diversity is a reality that cannot be ignored by anyone. Therefore, it has to be celebrated through dialogue. Congratulations for your beautiful presentation. I invite now Brother Clint Chaco to present his response to the paper which we have just now heard. Pope Francis in Laudato Si says, the extended deserts in the world are growing because the Indiana deserts have become so vast. Good morning, everyone. Respected Father Kurian Kachpali, the president of TVK, Father Wilson Adatukaran, Dean Department of Philosophy, members of the faculty, scholars, and my dear friends. First of all, I would like to extend my congratulations to Brother Chris for his excellent presentation on the topic Dialogue celebrating the beauty of diversity. The presentation was inspiring, but also at the same time, an in-depth analysis and an enlightening understanding of the topic. He has rightly pointed out the necessity to strengthen our bonds by making use of the method dialogue, which calls for mutual respect and dialogue promotes, promotes fraternity and fraternity promotes peace and harmony. The encyclical letter Fratelli Tutti aims to promote a universal aspirations toward fraternity and social friendship, beginning with our common membership in the human family from the acknowledgement that we are brothers and sisters because we are the children of one creator, all in the same boat, and hence we need to be aware that in a globalized and interconnected world, only together we can be saved. As we all know, Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti are very much connected and we could say that Fratelli Tutti is the continuation of Laudato Si. As in Laudato Si, in Fratelli Tutti, we are once again challenged to create a new future, a new model of progress. Pro Francis sees it as a key that this new model of progress is centered on the flourishing of humanity in creation rather than based on the needs of the economy. This new model of progress should give priority to overcoming, overcoming hunger and poverty rather than focusing on creating wealth for those who are already rich. In the present anthropos anthropocentric society, everyone tries to make use of the other for their own needs. Even humans are also considered as mere objects. The manipulation and deformation of concepts such as democracy, freedom, justice, the loss of the meaning of the social community and history, the selfishness and indifference towards the common good, the prevalence of a market logic based on profit, and the culture of waste, unemployment, racism, poverty, the disparity of the rights, and the abrasions such as slavery, trafficking, women subjugated and forced to abort, organ trafficking, calculating money rate for all lives, make this world harder to live. Moreover, today, we observe a deterioration of ethics contributed to in a certain way by the mass media, which scatter respect for others and eliminates all discretions, creating isolated and self-referential virtual circles in which freedom is an illusion and dialogue being not constructive. In Laudato Si, the Pope starts from, the, from our common home and shows the interconnectedness of nature and man. After explaining the present environmental crisis, Pope comes to the root cause of the problem. The problem is clearly st stated by the Pope in paragraph 217. The extended deserts in the world are growing because the Indiana deserts have become so vast. Here, the questions are pointing toward us. The need to strengthen our bonds, our relationships, the need to broaden our minds and to break the chains of consumerist and individualistic nature from our hearts are strongly emphasized in the encyclical letter Fratelli Tutti. The world is very beautiful by its diversity and we have to celebrate it by accepting everyone as our brothers and sisters. As brother Chris said, the first aim of the dialogue is not to convince the partner of one's own de deeply held convictions, but to understand another in a deep way. It is above all a spiritual experience in understanding the other, listening and speaking to one another in love. In my opinion, 
dialogue would be an effective tool to unite humanity under one banner through dialogue we could understand the other the, the others with their uniqueness and thus we could go for an interior conversion to build up a peaceful world in which all creation could praise the creator and celebrate their lives wholeheartedly thank you thank you brother clint chako for your response to this paper now we enter into the question and answer session uh, we have very little time so we will try to maybe want to take up one or two questions from the group chat we have one question from shibhi kunyumon i will read out the question for you so that everyone can listen and then brother chris will respond to this question dialogues are always taking place for the peace and unity but the question is that does it effect can we find more effective ways to fix unity in this world of diversity according to this latest encyclical of pope francis fratelli tutti yes uh thank you for your question uh actually i do see this uh from a very from the point of view as in pope francis um dialogue entails for me dialogue is like a pill it's like a medicine it's like a tablet that consists many ingredients ingredients that are beneficial for promoting harmony and peace it can it 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 has within itself empathy respect for the other tolerance listening to the other and uh, open ingredients are included in the pill of dialogue and so it's only with dialogue and dialogue is the only best and effective way to resolve conflicts to promote fraternity dialogue dwells in love and where there is love and where there is dialogue there is a more there is a, there is more scope to be uh, reconciled to resolve conflicts and to promote fraternity there's no other way if you ask another way the other way is not to reciprocate reciprocate to silently to be silent and to suffer silently and this is not the proper way the only proper way is dialogue wherein we share our views we share our convictions that is the only possible way but dialogue should be done in the way it is to be done thank you brother chris for your answer to this question the answer is very clear that we need to emphasize on dialogue and conduct it properly in the way it has to be conducted now all the mics are unmuted so if there's anyone attending you may please raise your question we will take only one question because we don't have much time this will be the last question is there anyone with any question please if there is no one then i will raise a very simple question brother we are speaking about dialogue and celebration of diversity is there any chance for us to compromise when we celebrate diversity uh diversity according to my view diversity is perfect in itself diversity is absolute there's nothing lesser there's nothing greater that i in my point of view nothing is to be com compromised because diversity in itself is perfection if there is no diversity it looks imperfect but since there is a whole inclusiveness in diversity it is perfect in itself and in my view there is no compromises in perfection thank you thank you brother there is one question this could be the last question since it has come in the group chat i have read out to you the peace promoters the question is coming from om omi scholastics from chennai the peace promoters appreciate the mode of dialogue to promote peace but there are people who do not appreciate both peace and dialogue here what would be the medium to have dialogue with such people yeah uh, such people people who do not stand for peace and dialogue are people whom i do not consider to be rational beings they have some abnormalities or there there is something wrong with them because normally rational people people who are able to think rationally in philosophical terms only they are people i think i consider Thank those you. people to be like uh, to to be uh, wor uh, not worthy i would say 
Only those people could be engaged in dialogue. Only those people could foresee peace and harmony. And if those are the ideas that man puts forward, this is the only way of resolving them. Yes, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, brother Chris Joseph, for presenting your paper beautifully and having this wonderful session. I also thank Clint Chaco for uh, your wonderful response. And I thank DBK for giving us the opportunity to be part of this seminar and giving me the chance to be the moderator of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thanks a lot, Father Oswald. It was indeed an amazing session. Here, we enter the final session of the day. I'm deeply honored to introduce to you another eminent philosopher come Faculty of Philosophy, DVK, Professor Dr. Josnan Dikara to moderate the last and final session. Over to you, Father. Thank you, Brother Jeril. And welcome to the fourth and final session of this Fratelli Tutti, Impact and Import. And we have Brother John Brito Oyamai. This is the first time a student from the Masnod Institute of Philosophy presenting a paper. Most welcome to present your paper on ecology, concern for the common home. Welcome, Brother John DiBerto. Thank you for the introduction, dear Father. Once again, a very good morning to you all. Am I audible? Yes, Brother. I'm very happy to present a paper on ecology, concern for our common home. I would like to share my PowerPoint. Ecology, concern for our common home is the theme of my presentation. I have divided my presentation into three parts. The first part deals with the importance of ecology. The second part exhibits the concern for our common home as explained by Pope Francis in his encyclical Laudato Si. And the third will unveil the transition that exists from Laudato Si to Fratelli Tutti. The importance of ecology. Generally, ecology means the relation of plants and other living creatures to each other and to the environment, views of different religions. Down through the centuries, every religion has extolled the significance of nature and has helped humans to shape our attitudes towards the nature, our common home. Religions have provided us a basic interpretive notion of who we are, what nature is, where we have come from, and where do we go? In Hinduism, we see, especially in the Vedas, states that no activity, whether biological, natural, human, or metaphysical, can exist outside the fear of the earth. The Vedic man was nature-centered. For him, all natural phenomena arose from the divine source. In Buddhism, the ecological sensitivity is emphasized by the call to equal sanctity of all beings. The ethics of universal harmony, Dhamma, embraces not only the human world, but the entire realm of beings. Taking care of the planet is nothing special, nothing sacred or holy. It is just like taking care of our own home, this Mother Earth. Jainism bases itself on the belief that the unity of all life, including animals, plants, and even the minute atoms of matter, inevitably provide for a meaningful coexistence. Liberation or salvation, according to Jainism, belongs to the whole universe, the animal, vegetative, and the human kingdom. Christianity too, as a religion, believes that this world is a gratuitous free gift of God. It emphasizes the ecological responsibilities of all Christians as towards of God's earth. Today's context. However, in today's context, the ecosystem is being exploited by the various irresponsible actions of human beings, which in turn has affected our common home in and on which we live. The climate change and the global warming, the tsunami a few years ago 
the nuclear disaster, gigantic wildfires, and precedent floods, and expected heat waves, and periods of droughts, extreme cloud waves in different parts of the world have led to irrevocable worsening of our common home, leading to a terrific welfare loss. The misuse of technology to pollute, the excessive proliferation of human species, ignorant causal relationship with the nature, and finally, our mistaken values and attitudes have done a great damage to our common home. How are we to stop this plundering and raping of our common home? How are we to rediscover our lost ecological sensitivity? How can we safeguard our environment for the generation to come? Let us analyze, reflect, and answer these dynamics of our common home for the ecological insights of, of Francis, a staunch protagonist and defender of integral ecology enshrined in his encyclical Lauda Tosi and Pedali Tuti. Lauda Tosi, the concern for our common home. This encyclical is by Pope Francis, which is addressed to every person living on this planet. Pope Francis calls the church and the world to acknowledge the urge of our environmental challenges and to join him in embarking on a new path. In publishing this encyclical, Pope Francis calls us for an integral ecology, which is the need of the time for everything in the world is connected. Why do we need an integral ecology? It is needed because of the fading glory of a common home and the ecosystem. Then who would be the cause for this fading glory of our ecology? So it is each one of us and our consumerist culture characterized, characterized by wastefulness, indifference, indifference, and the rapidification of daily life and the irrevocable causes for it. The heart of Lauda Tosi would be the following question. What kind of the world do we want to leave to those who come after us? What kind of the world do we want to leave to those who come after us and to the children who are now growing up? There are various other questions for Francis raises us and instructs us that unless and until we struggle to find the answers to these deeper issues of our existence in our common home, the values are the basis of our social life the purpose of our living and the, and the goal of our work and all our efforts in the world. Pope Francis believes that our concern for ecology will never be able to produce significant results. What is happening to our common home? To this question, the answer is one's own awareness. One needs to observe what is happening around him. Even though there are many wonders and beauties around us, there still exists the pollution in the air. There is the climate change. There is the issue of water scarcity. There is the loss of biodiversity. There is the overpopulation. And finally, a very strong unwillingness to change our lifestyle, production, and consumption. The gospel of creation is that there is a deep down connectedness between humans and other living beings. We are given the power to steward the earth by God. He gave us freedom, dominion over the earth, or the absolute domination and destruction over earth is a wrong way of understanding of the gospel. But the right understanding would be the responsibility to cultivate and protect our common home, the mother earth. If we do not listen to the cry of the earth, definitely we cannot call ourselves humans and Christians. In one or the other way, all the creatures are moving forward with us, through us, towards a common destination point called God. Thus, a sense of deep communion with nature requires tenderness, compassion, and concern for all fellow human beings. All of us are linked by an unseen bond, of, unseen bond to form a universal family, for everything is connected. Everything is connected, echoes like a drumbeat through the encyclical. The purpose of our existence is to build a communion with God, neighbor, and nature. Pope Francis gives us a spiritual perspective on the environment. We have to acknowledge and respect the nature 
for it is from the divine we need to be selfless and should open ourselves for an authentic dialogue which will help us to know the other so we need to be awakened and move towards an ecological conversion thus for francis looks at man as part of nature not outside nature which means caring for nature is a must because taking care of nature means taking care of our human family the earth is of course our common home not ours only to possess and own but we need to care and hand it on to the next generation for which a selfless heart and integral ecology and the impartial love is needed so we and the nature are one if the nature is being exploited then the humanity is also exploited transition from laudo tosi to pratali tutti the encyclical letter pratali tutti by for francis is addressed to the whole church and to everyone who is concerned about the relationships personal political economical ecological and spiritual that makes up our lives together the deadly virus covid 19 has put us all in strained relationships national and international why even our ecosystem as well at this time the pope's letter pratali tutti comes as an inspiration and hope pratali tutti and laudo tosi in many ways pratali tutti continues from laudo tosi in laudo tosi the pope wanted to elevate us to a new ecological vision as to how we can live in our common home as members of a delicate ecosystem in hearing the cry of our mother earth he made us aware of the effects of our exploitative actions and a, and a responsible way of respecting and cherishing the entire creation as a gift of god entrusted to us the vision of laudo tosi was both challenging and inspiring but it did not have all answers it only showed us another way of thinking and acting and creating an integral ecology which might lead us to find solutions to the problems and help us to live our lives more in harmony with the natural world around us in the same way pratali tutti is also showing us the same integral way of living and thinking but this time the uniqueness here is that it focuses on human relationships both on a personal and community level that would gradually pave way to relate and connect ourselves more closely and deeply with our mother earth and our cosmos at large healing of our common home any human relationship that is authentic not only bring us many good things but also confers us with newer and renewed responsibilities such responsibilities are not burdens but an immense opportunity a chance for us to express our care love and concern for each other indeed including the planet which is our common home on which we live if laudo tosi spoke of an integral ecology then pratali tutti speaks of how to channelize this integral ecology through fraternity and social friendship for francis makes a move from laudo tosi to fratali tutti so as to mend our all through an integral ecology which is possible only when there is a deeper relationship and harmony in the human family where the healing of a common home would take place dr apj <clears throat> abdul kalam said where there is righteousness in the heart there is beauty in the character where there is beauty in the character there is harmony in the home where there is harmony in the home there is order in the nation and where there is order in the nation there is peace in the universe trilogy authentic and renewed relationships indeed would lead to a cosmic fraternity for francis through his encyclical letter fratelli tutti calls us for human fraternity and solidarity everyone must be given respect because all the creatures share a common dignity 
everyone must be given respect because all the creatures share a common dignity we need to see fratelli tutti as part of a trilogy of documents along with evangelii gaudium and laudato si evangelii gaudium called us for the healing and renewal within the church and laudato si called us to participate in the healing of our common home fratelli tutti says that this healing can only be done together as sisters and brothers in solidarity and social friendship thus there is no doubt this encyclical letter fatali tutti built builds on his encyclical letter laudato si tutti written 5 uh, years ago fatali tutti passionately instructs every one of us that ecological healing or our concern for common home can only be done together as sisters and brothers in solidarity and social friendship we can begin to restore our common home which is bruised and wounded by mending ourselves if we build up a human community based on true love and self sacrifice definitely god is with us for we are the effects of the own essence called god so the effect never cannot be separated from the essence as in laudato to si in fratelli tutti we are once again challenge to create a new future this new model progress is centered on the flourishing of humanity in creation which must give priority to overcoming hunger and poverty rather than based on the needs of the economy and focusing on creating wealth for those who are already rich conclusion many people still take or choose these themes concerning ecology nature mother earth etc because we have failed to maintain the mother earth and keep it in order so it is an evergreen one i meant to say a never ending conflict every human action has its own reaction so every hum- immoral human behavior towards ecology comes as a natural calamity that brings destruction to the whole world for what we saw we will reap therefore the need of the time is a proper nurturing of the ecosystem because eco justice is human justice let us hear the cry of the mother earth and recognize that we are an integral part of it if we take care of the ecology definitely eventually in return we also will be cared and the generations yet to come our world is a free gift of god but it must be shared with the generations to come this is free gift is never meant to be exploited to be ruined or robbed a true ecological concern is always a social responsibility it is a commitment to sanctity of life and a commitment to unity so let us recognize one another as brothers and sisters and hear the cry of the earth heal the earth with selfless love and care let us let our lives be in deeper communion with god our fellow brethren and with the nature so anyone who is in communion with god cannot but be in communion with nature and thus be ecological too so as i conclude my paper i would like to express my sincere thanks to the faculty members of dvk for having given me this wonderful opportunity to present my paper on ecology concern for our common home i also wish to thank the rector dr hari manuel and the staff and the students of dimasnet institute of philosophy for having equipped equipped me and supported me to prepare this paper thanks to all the participants for encouraging me through your valuable presence thank you hearty congratulations brother john d brito for that powerful and very clear message on a topic of great importance yes may i now request brother matthew smerian to give to respond to the paper brother matthew audible 
Yes, brother. Thank you, Father. Good morning to all. At the outset, let me thank Brother John T. Brito for his presentation on ecology concerns for our common home. We were privileged to hear you as you sailed us through your well segregated and collected reflections on the topic. It would be a heavy duty to credit a response to it, but I would like to give it a try. When I think about your paper presentation and with special emphasis on Fratelli Tutti, I cannot but bring myself to the court from love and responsibility by St. John Paul II. A person's rightful due is to be treated as an object of love, not as an object for use. He was very clear and rightly so in antagonizing love and use. Following his predecessors, Pope Francis also raises his worries about this culture of use, which from an ecological perspective culminates in the abuse of God-given stewardship by humans. Brother Brito has highlighted this towards the end of his initial comparison between the various religious stands about ecology. Noting in the lectern that the present encyclical is a continuum of the prior ones, Evangelii, Gaudium, and Laudate Si, he explained this by comparing the encyclicals. Laudate Si, addressed to the whole world for healing the ecology, asserted that the creation was not to be abused and envisaged a spiritual perspective by calling for an ecological conversion. Instead of um, misunderstanding stewardship as dominion over the whole creation, which would be a wrong reading of the gospel message, men are to take this stewardship as a responsibility to protect. We cannot just shirk the responsibility of the damage to ecology by attributing it to technology, as technology is human invention. When Laudate Si thus reflected the genuine concern for ecology, Fratelli Tutti is a step further by laying out a solution as to how to deal with them. It can only be through fraternity and social friendship. It was remarkable for Brother Brito to call our former president being very relevant in this context. APJ Abdul Kalam used to love repeating that quote about being a world citizen, which he even did in his European Union address. Few points from the concluding paragraph were also notable. Our world is a free gift of God and true ecological concern is always a social responsibility. It is a commitment to sanctity of life and a commitment to unity. Being a chameleon myself, I could especially relate to that personally. On behalf of Tharmaram family and all listeners, let me heartily thank Brother John D. Brito once again for this comprehensive presentation. I would like to conclude with a query to Brother Brito. Theme of fraternity is not a novel theme in the Catholic social teaching, nor is the condemnation of use and abuse. Fratelli Tutti focuses more on universal brotherhood. Ecology comes as a derived notion in the encyclical, unlike in Laudate Si. This derivation to protect our common home can be done from the formal teaching, former teachings as well. If so, what makes the solutions of Fratelli Tutti for building up an integral e ecology distinct from others? Thank you. Thank you, Brother Matthews, for the creative response to John De Brito's paper. Uh, congratulations and thanks. We are already 11.41. So, Brother Jirin, how shall we proceed? We have four questions and uh, it's time for the concluding message. Should we go with the questions or shall we wind up? Uh, Father, we shall take uh, two questions uh, that you can choose either from the chat box or uh, an open question. That it's, yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. So, if there are that, I would just refer to the questions and Brother John D. Brito can respond to any question. The first question from Pavan, uh, uh, no, Pavan Gaudi Pudi. So it, I would assume that one of the um, brothers of the OCD, what are the present day problems of ecology and the common home for the common home and what are the solutions? And there is another question from Brother Rajesh. 
on the terrorism between terrorism in general and particularly about India and Pakistan. And as a religious and church of India, how can we participate to make peace between the countries? And then there is one question from Shibi Kunyumon. Exploration leads to exploitation, which brings disunity. Can you propose some ways through which we could avoid exploitation while we explore in the light of encyclical Fateli Tuti? There is one more question from Brother Nibin. Cry of the earth and cry of the poor. This is the basic concept of both encyclicals, Laudato Si and uh, Fratelli Tutti. What is the relevance of the Holy Father's vision in the present scenario to enable the healing of our earth through healing of the inner hearts of the humans? And the fifth question from the response, what is new in the fraternity in the Fratelli Tutti? It's a common topic. So, Brother John DiBretto, the choice is yours. You take one question, and if there is time permits, we will respond to one more question. Thank you for those who raised the questions. It's only the time gap. Now we are 11.43. Take two minutes. Thank you, Father, for putting for the questions. And, uh, of course, I would like to answer the first question. What are the present-day problems of ecology and common home? So of course, as I mentioned in my, as I presented my papers, I said that uh, the answer is our own awareness. Of course, if we see the lot of air pollution, we may think, we may tend to think because we need vehicles to move one place to other place. But uh, just to, you can think of other, maybe 10 members are riding a bike and going but they can use uh, public transport. And also, I would say this uh, recycling things would be a better way to face the ecological problems. Of course, uh, there are uh, natural calamities which uh, no one could answer why it is and how it is. But the exploitation of the ecosystem is uh, done by our own immoral actions. I meant to say the war is of things, yes, of course. By war racing, we misuse, and by misusing, we abuse the nature. So I would suggest you use the things that are given to you and gifted by God, and also reuse it, by which we can preserve at least something from our part as a responsible person to the generations yet to come. It would be my answer. Thank you, Brother John Gibretto. You may re respond to one more question, perhaps to Brother Matthew Marian, who was asking, what is new in the encyclical Fratelli Tutti about the ecology? Because ecology was well treated in his encyclical Laudato Si. What is the difference in Fratelli Tutti? Actually, in Laudato Si, Pope just uh, called us uh, for a healing of a common home. But the uniqueness here is the fraternity and social friendship because it is one and one makes two. So when we are all together, the healing would take place. So a tiny pot joins together and makes a whole. So the whole will be meaningful or the whole reaches its fullness through the tiny particles. So, so it is step by step, we need to make the friendly relationship with one another through which we will be able to build up a society based on solidarity and fraternity through which the healing of our common home would take place. So in this encyclical Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis gives us the way for the healing of our common home. Thank you, Brother John G. Brito. Of course, we could have a longer discussion, but time is already late and back to Gerald. Thank you, Brother John G. Brito, Matthew Marion, and all those who have raised questions. 
Thank you so much, Father Jose, for wonderfully moderating the session. Now, to give the concluding message and mark the end of fruitful, vibrant, enriching webinar session, I invite Professor Dr. Sebastian Alakepali, Philosopher and Faculty of Philosophy, DVG. Hello, dear Fratelli. In today's world, a sense of belonging to a single human family is fading and the dream of working together as brothers and sisters for justice and peace seems an outdated utopia. What reigns instead is a globalized indifference that often results in isolation and withdrawal into one's own interest. It is in this context that Pope Francis is calling the entire humanity, all of us, to a new way of living together. He says it is important to dream together as a single human family, as fellow travelers. The immediate context of the COVID-19 pandemic also teaches us to realize that our lives are related, interwoven with that of others. Today, in our webinar, the impact and import of Fratelli Tutti, Brothers Alphonse B.C., Pavan Kumar OCD, John Brito OMI, and Chris Joseph CMI have analyzed the profundity of the teachings of Pope Francis from different philosophical perspectives. They have discussed the four major themes in Fratelli Tutti, namely fraternity, dynamic religion, and peace, politics with charity, ecology, and connectedness, and finally, dialogue that will ensure fraternity. We congratulate our brothers for their excellent presentation. Now, corresponding to the expositions of the brothers, I would like to highlight four takeaways that stand out in Fratelli Tutti as the concluding message. In fact, I have no message other than the message of Fratelli Tutti. Number one, strangers are neighbors. While individualism runs rampant in much of society, Pope Francis seeks a world where we are one human family very much in a spirit of Vasudeva Kudumbagam. Article 62 says, we must learn to realize that strangers are really our neighbors in one great family where all of us can feel at home. In the third chapter of Fratelli Tutti, Prof. Francis says that no one can experience the true beauty of life without relating to others. Life exists where there is bonding, communion and fraternity. On the contrary, there is no life when we claim to be self-sufficient and live as islands. I understand Pop's focus on this fraternity, universal fraternity and social friendship as a timely antidote to the individualism that pervades our society and undermines the common good. Number two, fraternity calls for a better kind of politics. In chapter five, Pope Francis explains that the development of a global community of fraternity calls for a better kind of politics. We need our politics to be truly at the service of common good. It should be animated by the willingness to make sacrifices and the openness required to be truly unity. Number three, Everything is connected. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis defined his notion of integrated ecology, the idea that everything is connected, including the well being of humans and the well being of our Mother Earth. Fratelli Tutti further echoes the same sentiments of connectedness. connectedness. Our connectedness invites us all to dream together and to have hope for the future of greater peace, greater love, and greater justice. Number four, difference should not be feared. Differences in race, social status, ethnicity, gender, and political thought abound in our society today. Pope tells us not to fear the differences, but to transcend them 
with a love capable of transcending borders and a commitment to serving the vulnerable now to conclude for francis challenges and inspires all of us to respond with a new vision of fraternity and social friendship that will not remain at the level of words in today's parlance pope francis wants us to walk the walk not just talk the talk let us make fraternity a way of life fraternity a habit that take us to the sublime levels of dignity and unity fratelli tutti is a beacon light on the way of viewing life and living life in dialogue for the world of universal fraternity let us belong to one family let us be connected to our brothers and sisters in dignity and unity let us be connected to our mother earth and let us together join in the process of building a more just and fraternal world i conclude with a prayer from rigveda united united your hearts may your spirit be at one that you may long together dwell in unity and concord thank you warmest thanks father may i now call upon brother nibin kapani cmi to propose what a thanks respected father president reverend dr kurian kachapalli cmi dean of the philosophy faculty reverend dr wilson adartugar and cmi all the fathers and my dear friends pope francis starts the third chapter of fratelli tutti envisaging and engendering an open world with a strong statement that life exists where there is bonding communion fraternity and life is stronger than death when it is built on true relationships and bonds of fidelity no one can experience the true beauty of life without relating to others without having real faces to love fratelli tutti article 87 yes friends we are here with a sense of elation and stupefaction of having taken a great participation in the webinar on impact and import of fratelli tutti with a great love fraternity and communion as pope francis mentioned on this auspicious occasion i would like to express my gratitude on behalf of the philosophy faculty of dharmaram vidya kshetram to all the members who toiled their time for the success of the webinar first of all i would like to express my gratitude to father president reverend dr kurian kachapalli cmi who initiated the friday webinar series 2020 on fratelli tutti thank you father for your inspiring inaugural address and great initiation towards dharmaram vidya kshetram thank you thank you so much next in the line i would like to thank reverend dr wilson adartugar and cmi the dean of the philosophy faculty dvk for this enriching initiation support and guidance to host the friday webinar on impact and import of fratelli tutti thank you father thank you so much today's first session was delivered by brother alphonse natranical vc from dipol institute of religion and philosophy bangalore thank you for your inspi inspiring presentation our word of thanks to reverend dr grigory marail cmi for moderating the session and also mr rohin vijay kumar for the response thank you so much the next session was presented by brother pavan kumar ocd from pushpasanma institute of philosophy mysore thank you brother for your inspiring presentation and also a heartfelt gratitude to reverend dr roy varkad vc for moderating the session and brother mrudul kodian cmi for his response thank you thank you so much our special words of gratitude to our fellow member brother chris joseph padiara cmi from dharmaram vidya kshetram bangalore for your wonderful presentation we also thank reverend dr oshwald krista ocd for moderating the session and brother clint chako putokar and cmi his response the final session was handled by brother john de brito oymi from they must north institute of philosophy perambakam we are extremely grateful to you brother our sincere gratitude to reverend dr jos nandikira cmi for moderating the session and brother matthews marian for his response summing up all the sessions 
Reverend Dr. Sebastian Aleke Perle, CMI, delivered an inspiring and wonderful concluding message. We are happy and indebted to you, Father, for your message. Therefore, we have come to the end of the Friday webinar series 2020 on Fratelli Tutti. I take this opportunity to confer a word of thanks to today's MC of the webinar, Brother Jiril Tanikel CMI, Dharmaram Koya team for prayer song and Dharmaram anthem. Also, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks to the technical team consisting of Reverend Father Rafi Kadavi CMI, brothers Jinoy, John Carroll, George, Nigil, Jensen, Abin, Thomas, Christo, Mr. Baburaj, and Mr. Srijesh. Last but not the least, I would like to express my gratitude to all the participants who have actively participated in the Friday webinar. Let us all live in the true spirit of fraternity by the conviction, we brothers and sisters, Frateli Tuti. Once again, thanking you all. I remain, thank you, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Brother Nibin. It has been a wonderful day throughout. There were really scholarly, erudite and knowledgeable sessions, well sophisticated and sagacious presentations and highly astute and thought provoking questions and responses. Overall, it gives a satisfactory impression that Fratelli Tutti has already started to create great impacts and imports among the young philosophers across our nation. Let the fraternal bond between humans and the fraternal relationship between humans and the oikos become stronger so that the cry of the neighbor and that of nature is not left unanswered anymore. Once again, heartfelt thanks to all the participants, speakers and moderators for spending the valuable time and energy. Also, I express sincere gratitude to all the faculty members of the Department of Philosophy, DVK. I also remember with appreciation all those behind the curtain workers, the coordinator, IT desk, DVK choir, DVK library staff, and all those who have toiled behind the success of this webinar. Inviting you all again to the fraternal love. It's me, Gerald Tom, CMI, signing out. Let's all rise up for the DVK anthem. Jayatta Vidya Shetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati Naisman Vidya Yamritam Dharma Shetra Tva Maksharam Param Rekshidam Yesu Deva Sambhava Isa Bhakti Parajnanam Basuram Tava Vajana Bhashanam Tatva darsanam, visvesha chindanam, dhyano vasanam, sobanam tava jivanam. Jayatra vidya shetra bhavanu bharati, naisman vidya amritam. Sarva dharma marga vedanam, sarva jana maitri chodanam. Pavanam Sava Sevanam Punya Tirta Deva Janan Udhyane Paramadasu Mata Maria Jayatva Vidya Shetra Bhavavanu Bharati Naisman Vidya Amritam Jayatva Vidya Shetra Bhava Bhanu Bharati Thanks again. We couldn't have pulled this off without you. Have a nice day.